uh, we'll also destroy this game object. And Rocket is pretty much as simple as that. Um, yeah, that's it for the Rocket class. Uh, tracking Rocket, uh, there's a little bit more to it, but it's pretty basic. So, Tracking Rocket, extend Rocket this time. And we're going to create a private transform. called target and we'll override the uh, start function uh, we'll set the lifespan to four seconds just because having a whole ton of these tracking rockets on the screen at the same time is expensive uh, just because they're constantly uh, normalizing uh, the rotation vector and a whole ton of square roots and everything going on so we will just make their lifespan shorter and avoid that problem altogether. We're also going to start two coroutines called check if target destroyed and then start another one called uh, rotate towards enemy. Um, our rotate towards enemy could be done in the update function if we wanted to, but uh, the whole normalizing thing, we need to basically keep we need to keep stuff like that only when we need it. Uh, doing it on every frame is overkill. So you're not really going to notice it if it's happening, say, 5 to 10 times a second compared to, say, 60 to 200 or whatever your frame rate is. And then base.start. And that's good to go. Um, so let's fill in that check if target destroyed function. So private i enumerator check if target destroyed yield return new wait for seconds point five half a second while true, so we're creating an infinite loop here. If target is null, we'll find the target. And that's another function we'll be making. And then we will yield return wait for seconds uh, 1, because we only need to check this every once in a while. And once per second is fine. Um, we're doing a yield before, just so that, uh, let's say we make it so that the tracking rocket needs to uh, take some time to calculate its next uh, target. Just to, I don't know, uh, Just it just adds a bit. It doesn't really look right if your rocket is automatically firing off uh, towards your target compared to if it moves straight and then has to kind of veer off into that path. Um, so our next function is we're, we're just going to fill in the find target function. Void find target. So base entity new target if else oh man if um, instigator type is equal to type of player we're going to create an object array called enemy list 
This is going to take in every enemy that's currently spawned. So find objects of type type of enemy. And then we're just going to find a random enemy in that list. So enemy list uh, random dot range zero enemy list dot length as enemy. And then if it's n if instigator type is not player, so if it's an enemy shooting this, new target is going to be game object dot find object object of type type of player. There's only going to be one player, so we only need to return one, and that should be good. Um, if new target found something, so it's not equal to null, target is equal to new target dot transform. And then we're going to stop the coroutine. Uh, check if target is destroyed. Also keep in mind that stop coroutine takes a string and not an actual function. Uh, start coroutine takes both. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I don't know. Alright, so now we will fill in rotate towards enemy. So private, i.e. numerator, rotate towards enemy. So we're going to create another infinite loop while true. Yield return new. Wait for seconds. We can get away with doing this, say, five times a second, compared to 60 or something. Um, if target is not null, we will find the uh, direction vector. So, and it needs to be normalized. So. Target dot position minus transform dot position. This needs to be normalized, otherwise, uh, uh, if there's a value, if this is greater than one, um, like if this is if the movement direction's magnitude is greater than one, it's going to screw up the speed of the rocket. So it's going to be moving fast for a second and then slowing down, and it's just going to look really weird. So we just normalize it to uh, keep that under control. All right. So else, uh, we'll start our coroutine back up. Check if target destroyed. There. That should be good. Yep. Um. So what we can do is. We have our rocket prefab. If we attach our rocket script, and we can remove the box collider because it attaches a sphere, uh, we'll do the same for the tracking rocket. Remove box, and then add script. Um, if we change, oh yeah, before we do that, um, we'll have to set the rocket explosion to our prefab. Okay. Now, um, to test this out, we will put the rockets in place of the projectiles of the main player weapon. Let's see how this looks. There we go. It's a very large cube, but uh, you get the point. We have our particles following the cube. Could be a rocket if it didn't look so ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, 
that works fine. So uh, what we're going to do next is the uh, the particle editor.